Welcome to our presentation on the eight steps to creating accessible Microsoft Word documents. This presentation was created by California State University Fullerton Campus Information Technology Training in the fall of 2010. This presentation is intended as an overview of creating accessible Microsoft Word documents. After this presentation, there will be videos on each of the topics discussed here, demonstrating how to use these different tools and features inside of Microsoft Word to create an accessible document. Step 1 in creating an accessible Microsoft Word document is by using styles to identify what the particular content in your document is. For example, you could use a heading style to identify the different headings and their different levels within your document so that a screen reader can read that information back and the individual can determine exactly what part of the document they wish to um, go to to get the information. You can also identify body text, lists of information, so on and so forth by using these different styles but the most important styles for you to use in your Word documents are always going to be the heading styles because those represent the organizational structure of your document. In addition, whenever you create a heading style in your document, if you choose to convert this into a PDF, it will automatically convert your headings into accessible bookmarks in your PDF document. So remember to use heading styles in your document. The second step in creating an accessible Word document is to use the appropriate tool for creating columns and tables when you have those elements in your document. If your document has columns of text, you're going to want to always use the columns tool inside of Microsoft Word. Some people mistakenly use tables to simulate different columns of text in Word for like a newsletter style document. You should always use the Columns tool so that Word is sure to read the text back in the correct order. In the same way, if you have a table in your document, you're going to want to use the Tables tool to create that table of information. Never set up tables using tabs or using the Column tools. The easiest way to create a table, again, is simply to use the Table tool inside of Microsoft Word. If you have existing tables inside of a Word document that you've created with tabs as opposed to the table tool. Word has an easy tool to conveniently convert those tabbed tables into regular Word tables. The third step in creating an accessible Word document is to use the appropriate navigation tools within your document. Now if you've already gone ahead and labeled your headings with different heading styles that's going to take care of the majority of the navigation within the document for screen readers and other accessibility tools. However there are three other items that you need to make sure to use the um, correct tool inside of Microsoft Word and those are tables of contents, indexes, and the different kinds of notation tools for example footnotes and endnotes. And these tools can easily create a working and easily updatable navigation system to get to different elements within your document. And also remember to use page numbers in the header or the footer section of the document so that these navigation elements work correctly. Which leads us directly into the fourth step in creating an accessible Word document and that's to use headers and footers appropriately within your document. Whenever you have actual heading content, for example a section or chapter name, or a page note, or a page number, you're going to want to always include those items inside of your headers and footers. Word's automatic page numbering features will automatically place the page numbers inside of your footer or your header depending on what you choose, and if you choose footnotes it will automatically place those page notes in the appropriate footer section. If you have other content that's common to all the pages, be sure to place those in the header or the footer area also. And this will prevent screen readers from reading that content back again and again as the person goes through the um, document. If the person using a screen reader wants to access the information in the header or the footer, there's an easy command for them to do that. 
so it's not that they won't be able to get to the information it's just that the screen reader won't read it over and over and over again to them as they're going through the document so use your headers and footers appropriately the fifth step in creating an accessible word document is to use alternative text descriptions for any images that are in your document and actually this only applies to images that convey information if there is an image in your document that's purely decorative, doesn't convey any information at all to the reader, you can skip over those. But for all other images, you should provide some sort of a text description describing the information that the image conveys to the reader. Now, you can only use 255 characters inside of an alternative text description. So if you have a complex image that requires more explanation, a good example of this would be a chart or a graph that you might include in your um, in your document. You can simply use the alternative uh, text description to give it a basic description and then point the person to an appendix in your document that gives a more complete description of the information that's contained in that image. The sixth step in the process of creating an accessible Microsoft Word document is to ensure that all the links in your document actually work. Now, links are normally either in one of two categories. They're either going to be links to external documents or websites, and you can always tell these because they begin with the HTTP characters, or they may be navigation links internal to your document, for example, links in your table of contents or the footer endnotes that you've created. Either way, all of these links need to actually be active and working. Now, if you've used the correct tool inside of Word to create a navigation element like a table of contents or an index or the footnoting and endnoting tools, those links will automatically be created and maintained for you. Likewise, if you've created a link inside of Microsoft Word, usually when the link is created, it's converted into a working link automatically for you. If not, it's a simple process to convert something into a link, and you'll see that in another video. But regardless of what category they fall into, all of the links in your document do need to be working. The seventh step in making your Word document accessible is to use color and contrast appropriately. And these two elements um, assist people with either low vision or some level of color blindness. In the first area, color, the main thing there is that you do not use color as the only way to identify a particular piece of information. A common occurrence here is when you have a chart or a graph inside of a Word document and you may have um, bars in that particular chart that are identified by a color. You may have red bars, green bars, and blue bars. Well, if somebody is colorblind and you say, look at the red bars, they won't be able to tell what's a red bar possibly from another colored bar. So in addition to using color, you can use some sort of a pattern or possibly some crosshatching to identify which particular bars go with which particular legend elements. Another case where color is very important is in links. And you've probably noticed on many web pages and inside of Word or PDF documents that in addition to links changing color, and normally that's that sort of medium blue color, they're also underlined to indicate that that's a navigation element. So you want to always be sure that you only use color in addition to another way to identify a particular piece of information. The second element here would be contrast. You need to ensure that if you're using any kind of background colors or images, that there's ample contrast for people with low vision so that they'll be able to see the foreground text against the background. So again, generally speaking here, you want to use, if you use a background color at all, a very light or subtle background color with a dark foreground color, or vice versa. So make sure you keep in mind people with low vision and people with different levels of color blindness when you're using color and contrast in your document. 
The final step in creating an accessible Microsoft Word document is to consider the fonts and the font spacing that you use within the document. And basically here, the font that you choose needs to be very clear and very legible. You want to stay away from very decorative or unusual looking fonts or script fonts in your document because again, people with low vision will have trouble reading those texts. For your body text, you want to also make sure that your font sizes are not too small. And generally, this means that you want to stick with a font size that at the very minimum is 10 points and on the high side, maybe even 14 points. But you don't want very small text. You don't want to make your text like 9 points or 7 points in your document because, again, people with low vision will have difficulty using that. You also need to make sure that the spacing you use within your text is enough to show the paragraph breaks clearly. Spacing between lines should be at least 120% also. So you want to have adequate spacing between your paragraphs to indicate a paragraph break, and you also want adequate spacing between the different lines within the paragraph. Fortunately, the default for Microsoft Word does give you enough space in between paragraphs, and in addition, the line spacing is, by default, 120% of the font size. So you'll want to be sure, if you want to increase these, that'll be fine, but don't decrease them any more than what the default is inside of Microsoft Word. Thank you for taking the time to view this short presentation on the essentials of creating an accessible Microsoft Word document. At this point, you'll be able to go ahead and go through the remainder of the videos in this series, which will demonstrate the different skills within Microsoft Word that were discussed here. If you have any questions, you can contact Campus Information Technology Training for more information.